Okay. I'm a Helu. From the 403 to the HAZ. Mr. Nelson here. We are talking about function transformations. We know y is the same thing as f of x. y is a function of x, f is a function of x. We can rewrite this, and I, I said in the last video, if I was to get coordinates for x, y, I could rewrite those coordinates as x, f of x, because y and f of x are the same thing. In both cases, x is the input, that's kind of the variable, y and f of x is what gets pumped out. Okay, so that's important to know. So, in our previous video, and we, we were talking about the four things we can do to our function. We can stretch it vertically. That was the first thing we did, was stretching and compressing, also reflecting on the x-axis. That's what A does for us. Okay, and we know that A and K in red manipulate or change X, uh, Y coordinates, okay? X coordinates will stay the same when we're playing with A and K. The corresponding Y coordinates will change. And then we know that we don't know it quite yet, but we're going we're gonna to see that B and H manipulate or change the x-axis. Okay, so in the last video we were talking about manipulations with A. We know that A is responsible for vertical stretches along the y-axis by a factor of this, uh, the absolute value of A. Okay, so if A is three, we are, we are stretching, we are stretching our uh, function by a factor of three. So if our initial function was, had a range of between, you know, zero and four, so it went from zero to four, our new function should go from zero to 12 if we are applying a factor of three. Conversely, if we're, you know, doing one half the function, then all of our y coordinates we might, for the same x's we need to, to split in half. Uh, just you can see the previous video on y is equal to a f of x to, to see that. We know if it's negative, that means that we have a reflection in the x-axis, and we can have both a stretch and a reflection. Okay. And I mean we know that. If a, the absolute value of a is greater than zero, like I was, or greater than one, greater or equal to one, greater than one, if it's equal to one, it stays the same. So if it's greater than one, we get a stretch. And if a is a fraction, so it's between, the absolute value of a is between zero and one, we're gonna have compression, which means we're just gonna squish it, okay? Now, the next thing we're going to look at is the uh, horizontal or x um, version of A. So, we have B, okay? And just like A, or similar to A, B is going to be a horizontal stretch or compression. So we'll just call it a horizontal stretch. I have a habit of really starting to go sideways when I get to this point, so I'm going to try and not get crazy. Horizontal stretch. Now, B and H are kind of, they, they act funny. They kind of do opposite what you would expect. So in this case, we're going to do a horizontal stretch by a factor. Instead of by a factor of the absolute value of B, it's going to be by a factor of 1 divided by the absolute value of B. Okay. And what does that mean? Well, that means that if I have two in here, if I have y is equal, if I had y is equal to the function of two x, well, this number is in front of my x, so it is b. But this does not mean that I'm going to multiply all my x coordinates by two. In fact, it's the opposite. One divided by b, or the absolute value of b, one divided by the absolute value of two, is one half. So we're actually going to do the opposite that we did in this, uh, in this case, and we're going to do, so if we had two, it would not be doubling all of our x coordinates, it actually means we're going to half them. It just does the opposite, so we just need to get our head wrapped around that. So if this was in here one half, well b would be one half, so I'd put 
one half in here, and one divided by a half is two. So if it was one half in that case, I would actually be stretching it horizontally. We'll get there. And again, if it's negative, if B is negative inside that bracket, we are gonna now have a reflection, not in the x-axis, but in the y-axis. So we're gonna reflect over the vertical axis in y-axis. And so here we can see if B now is a number greater than one, the absolute value of B is bigger than one, we're going to get the opposite. We're gonna get a compression along the x-axis. And then if B is a fraction, in that case, one divided by a fraction will lead to a stretch. Okay, so what does this mean in practice? Well, let's use the same function we were using in the previous. How strange is that? It's pretty bad, but whatever. So let's use the same function we were using the last time around, which was f of x is equal to x squared. Just our baseline quadratic function, which we know um, we're going to just use a limited domain. We're going to use the exact same domain we did last time. We're going to, I'm just choosing random x's, and I'm just going to use negative 2, like a nice symmetrical uh, set of x's. And I know that this will look like, okay, so this is f of x, and it goes from 0 to 4. Okay, because negative 2 squared, negative 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, 0, 1, 4. Okay? So, <clears throat> now, let's say I have a new function, g of x, and I'll tell you, but I don't know what g of x is at, as it relates to x, all I know is how it relates to, uh, as a transformation of f of x. So I'm going to say that g of x is equal to f of, we'll say, 2x. Okay? I'm inside the bracket, so I know I'm going to be either B or H, but this 2 is in front of the X. It's multiplying by the X, so that means that it's my B. Okay? And in this case, now, I'm going to do my values for G of X. Well, actually, what I'm going to have to do is make a new table. So I'm going to make my table now for X, G of X. Okay? Now, I know that I am going to have, well, what's 1 divided by the absolute value of b there? Well, the absolute value of b is 2. So 1 over 2 means that I am going to half. Now, I'm manipulating my x-axis, so I'm going to only be playing with my x-coordinates. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep all of my y-coordinates the same. Okay? And it's the corresponding x-coordinates this time that I'm going to manipulate. So what is negative 2 divided by 2? Negative 1. What is negative 1 divided by 2? Negative 1 half. 0, Mr. 1 Mr. half, Mr. and 1. Okay, so all I did was I applied my stretch factor of 1 half to my x coordinates, and I kept my y coordinates the same. And what I would expect is, well, my original function was 4 units wide. It went from negative 2 to positive 2. So if I'm going to apply a, a, a stretch factor of one half, I should expect that my x-axis will shrink by half. So I should expect that I'll be too wide now. And if I go, I go from negative one to one, it's too wide. So my new function here will, instead of at negative two, I'm going to be at negative four at negative one, and there, and then at a half, x is equal to a half, I'm going to be at one, I'm still going to be at zero there. So my compressed function, g of x, is going to look something like that. And we'll notice that the vertical height of my function has not changed because I haven't, been, I haven't messed around with my a here. I'm not doing any vertical stretching. What I do notice is that I've actually pushed it from, I've reduced its width. And that's how I know I'm messing with b here. Now sometimes, if, if I were to just let, this, let both these functions go and not restrict the domain, then it becomes a little dis more difficult to distinguish whether I'm doing vertical stretches or horizontal stretches, right? Because these things can kind of go on forever. So 
It's a little tricky, but when we define our range and our domain to a restricted set of values, it's a lot easier to see. And that's good enough for me. Okay, so let's try, let's, let's change it up ever so slightly. So I'm going to give us, instead of giving us a function f of x, I'm going to draw us a function f of x. And I'm actually going to draw it over here, okay, just to make it easy. And I'm going to say that my function f of x just goes like this, okay? And I'm going to say that this coordinate here occurs at, say that that's negative 2, so it goes to negative 2. Whoops, that's y. So this is going to be at 4, negative 2. I'll say this coordinate is at um, 1, 3. Sure. And I'll say this is negative 1, 1. And I'll say that this is negative 4, 4. Okay? So here is just some random function, and I'm going to call this f of x. We don't actually have an equation, we just know that this is what the function looks like. It's a defined function with a defined domain and range. Okay, so I'm actually going to write down the coordinates, of each of the coordinates, as my x, f of x. Okay, so at x is equal to negative 4, my y or my f of x is 4. At negative 1, I get 1. At 1, I get 3. And at 4, I get negative 2. So I just fit this into a table of values. x, y, x, f of x, same thing. So now, I'm going to add, I'm going to tell you that, okay, now I'm going to do a function transformation. I'm going to call that g of x. And I'm going to call, I'm going to make a transformation of the type, uh, we'll do 1, Third. Am I going to bring your course selection form X. sign back to the counseling area? Uh, today or Monday would be great. Bring your sign <coughs> course selection form back. Muy importante. Okay. So now I can see that this number, this third, is inside my bracket. So I know it's for sure going to be either B or H. And it's in front of the end. So it's B. So I have B is one third. So I know that my stretch is going to be by a factor of 1 over the absolute value of b, and 1 divided by a third is 3. So here's my stretch factor. It's by a factor of 3, which means that I'm going to multiply all of my x coordinates while keeping my y coordinates the same by 3. So what does my new table of values look like? So I'm going to keep all. I'm going to keep all of my y's the same. I'm just going to fill in this table because I'm not touching my y coordinates. And now each of my x's I'm going to multiply by three. So this will become negative twelve. Negative four times three is negative twelve. Negative one times three is negative three. One times three is three. Four times three is twelve. So now I'm going to plot my new coordinates at negative twelve. I get to 4. So way out here, negative 12, 4. I mean, it's not to scale, but it's good enough. At negative 3, I'm going to be at 1. So negative 3, I'm going to be at 1. At 3, I'm going to be at 3. And at 12, way out here, I'm going to be at I mean, it's not to scale, it's going to be at negative 2, okay? So then my new function looks like this. And we'll notice, again, I haven't actually changed the height of my function. It still goes from y is equal to 4 down to y is equal to negative 2. What I have done is increase my x-axis by a factor of 3. So my original function was 8y from negative 4 to 4. And so I should expect that my new one should be 24 wide. And if I go from negative 12 to 12, that's 24 wide. So I have stretched it horizontally. And all I did was just played with each coordinate. I could just manipulate the coordinates when they don't give me a function. So let's do the last situation where we have both the stretch compression or stretch or compression with a... Uh, reflection. 
So I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna use a function. I'm gonna say, okay, y is equal to uh, x plus two. Okay, a real basic function. And I'm just gonna use a defined domain. Show the first thing to the opposite here. Okay, and I'm just gonna use a defined, I'm gonna go from x is equal to, so I'm gonna go from x is equal to four, to x is equal to negative four, and I'll have negative two and two. So let's see what all of these, are. so when x is equal to negative four, I'm actually gonna fill in my table values just like I did before. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go x from negative four, negative two, zero, two, four. Just random, it doesn't matter, I'm just choosing random x's, and I'm gonna see what my function spits out for each of those x's. So y, which is also equal to f of x, so f of x, or y, negative four plus two, negative two. Negative two plus two, zero. Zero plus two, two. Two plus two, four. Four plus two, six. Here is my function, okay, for my defined. So at four, I'm at six. At, mm, at two, I'm at four. At zero, I'm at two. At negative two, I'm at zero, and at negative four, I'm at negative two. So my function looks something like this, okay? Good enough. So now I'm gonna say g of x, g of x is equal to f of negative two x. Okay, now my b is negative n two. So the negative is telling me it's going to be a reflection in the y-axis. <clears throat> uh, and again, I'm not going to do anything to my y coordinates. I'm just going to manipulate my x coordinates. So both, I'm going to be both negative, so I'm going to be multiplying my x coordinates by negative 1, but I'm also going to be applying my stretch of 1 over b. 1 over the absolute value of b, which is the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Take this and just make a video here. So I'm going to be applying one half, and I'm going to multiply them by two. So my new table of values will be such that I'm going to keep my y's the same because I'm just playing with b. I'm not manipulating anything. So I'm going to just keep my y coordinates the same, and I'm going to mess with their corresponding x. So if I multiply x by negative one half, I get two. If I multiply negative two by negative one half, I get one. Zero, I get zero. Two, I get negative one. Four times negative one half is negative two. And so now what I would expect is I'm going to have, it should look something like this because I'm reflecting in the x-axis, but I'm also going to be shrinking it horizontally. So at two, x is equal to two, I'm at negative two. So, uh, I'm at negative 2, okay? At 1, I'm at 0. At x is equal to 1, I'm at 0. Uh, wait, this is not looking right. At 2, I'm at negative 2. That makes more sense. At 2, I'm at negative 2. At 1, I'm at 0. Should be right here. 1 at 0. At 0, I'm at 2. At negative 1, I'm at 4. And at negative two, I'm at six. And if I would have graphed this properly, we should just get a, a reflection, but we should also be getting, this should also be shrinking. So I did not graph that properly because I have a student in the class who's making me nervous right now. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. So two, two, negative two. So I'm gonna be at two, negative two, one, zero, zero, two, and negative one, four, and negative two, <clears throat> six. Okay? So in this case, it's, I did a terrible job of graphing it. Good morning, class and students. Just to remind you that today you will be going to your home rooms again. You will be going to your home rooms. Thank you. We can see that we already have a reflection in the x-axis, but we also, and I should, this should come all the way down here, 
but we also compress it, and it's hard to tell. I compressed it there, but we, we compressed it by a half. So it, it used to be eight units wide. We did it every single one. Jeez. Okay, it should be four wide now. We shrank it by a half. We went from eight wide to four wide. Oh my god.